Hello and welcome back to another build video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dark Souls 3. And to start off with my Dark Souls 3 builds, I decided to do something that was strong, but not something that is meta. Actually, I guess it is meta, now that I think about it. It's strong, but it's not overpowered. Actually, that's not really true either. It's the third best weapon in the game. It just... Let's go with that. It's the third best weapon in the game, but it's not the top of the top. So the Warden Twin Blades are a unique weapon in that they are a dual moveset weapon, which is rare for Dark Souls 3. And additionally, no one really understands how to use it properly. By that I mean people want to use it either hollow or blood. That is a horrible idea. At one point in the game's life cycle, in 2016, it might have been optimal to do Hollow. It is not 2016, Bleed has been nerfed heavily, and so it's actually better to use Sharp and use Karthus Rouge instead if you really want to spec into a Bleed build. It is the best Bleed weapon in the game, as far as DPS goes. You just don't get a lot of return going Hollow or Blood, as you can see, you lose a massive amount of DPS going Hollow and Blood, as opposed to Sharp with Karthus Rogue. The hollow is buffable with Karthus Rogue, and it does buff the Karthus Rogue scaling. However, it is not significant enough to make a difference in DPS. And the main reason for that is Bleed as a status is a lot weaker than it is in something like Elden Ring, where in Elden Ring, the boss health is a lot higher, and the proc damage multiplier is a lot higher as well. So in Elden Ring, the max HP is around 25,000, and the proc damage multiplier is 0.67, or 67%. So that means the status damage ends up being around 2,600. Then take Dark Souls 3, the average boss health is only 5,500, and the proc damage multiplier is 48%. So that means you're only doing like 432 damage per status application. Which is a lot lower, and that's why status isn't really used as much in Dark Souls 3. And actually, even though it's a Warden Twin Blade bleed build that I have, it's actually not optimal as a bleed build. You would be better off using Gold Pine Resin or Lightning Blade to get mo the more DPS out of it. That being said, if you want to do that, just use Cell Swords because they have a little bit more DPS. You can get them a lot easier. So, Warden Twin Blades kind of has a niche where you can use it for a bleed build, and Cell Swords you can't. We have 43 Vigor. This is not the Vigor soft cap, but it's close enough where it doesn't really make a difference. And honestly, in Dark Souls 3, the enemy and boss damage is low enough where you could only hit that first figure soft cap of 26 and be perfectly fine. Personally going into New Game Plus and facing the DLC bosses I prefer 43 vigor. It just gives me a little bit more wiggle room. I can play a little bit more sloppily. Then we have 30 Endurance. Endurance in Dark Souls 3 is really a dump stat after 26 Endurance. Especially if you're using Ring of Favor plus 3. Then we have 81 Dexterity. The soft cap for dexterity is a little weird because 60 is technically the breakpoint. However, the way that they set up the buff dexterity scaling is from 40 to 60, it's actually a lull in scaling. And then past 60, scaling picks up again up until like 90. And there really isn't a clear breakpoint. It depends on the weapon because from 60 to 90, is one scaling bracket, and that's just exponential decay where as you get closer to the top, it tapers off more. And based on the base damage of the weapon, it can taper off at different spots. 81 Dexterity is kind of that breakpoint for the Warden Twin Blades. You don't get a whole lot of AR after that. And you can stop at 80, but if you get 81, it does jump up one more point. We start Deprived, so we have 10 in every stat. For the armor, we just have optimal physical absorption for 
our weight. So we have the Shadow Mask, the Slave Knight Armor, the Desert Pile Mancer Gloves, and the Shadow Leggings. If you're a huge fashion nerd, you can increase vitality or whatever and put on whatever armor set you want. Then for the weapons, we have the Warden Twin Blades. Obviously, they are sharp infused, and we are buffing it with Corthus Rogue. It's actually very important that you get Intelligence and Faith at 10. I didn't really mention this because it's not relevant since we're in the bribe, but if you're going to start in this different class, you do want Intelligence and Faith at 10, as well as Attunement. And the reason for that is we're using Power Within, which needs 10 Faith and Intelligence, and you need 10 Attunement for that first spell slot. And then we have the Old Wolf Curve Sword as a backpack. You don't need them really have the stat requirements for it. You can if you want something that hits a little bit harder. It doesn't matter. The Warden Twin Blades are just going to be a lot better. And the reason we have that is it increases our attack as long as our attack persists. So this is kind of like the Millicent's Prosthesis or Rotwing Sword Insignia of Dark Souls 3. And then we also have a Pyromancy Flame just to cast power within. For the rings we have the Pontiff's right and left eye. The right eye Increases the attack as long as the attack can persist. Again, very similar to Millicent's Prosthesis and Rocket and Sword Insignia. And the left eye restores 30% HP with successive attacks. I just have it here because it also does the same thing as the Old Wolf Curve Sword, as well as it kind of offsets the power within health drain. Not super important. The Pontiff's left eye is really just a placeholder for whatever you want. Then we have the Ring of Steel Protection, boosting our Absorption. And then the Ring of Favor, which gives us HP, Stamina, and Equip Load. And that is the entire build. So thank you guys for watching, and leave in the comments if you want me to do another Dark Souls 3 video, or if you want me to go explore the other Dark Souls games, or do another Elden Ring build.